Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the second installment of a brand new three-part program brought to you by Gen Air Canada, Modern Luxury, the event series. My name is Elizabeth Pagliaglo. I'm the editor-in-chief at Azure Magazine, and I'm thrilled to be here today. Gen Air exists to drive progress in the appliance industry by delivering limitless possibilities for luxury consumers. With that, this series focuses on thought-provoking design concepts, and it seeks to push progressive conversation in the design community around the evolution of modern luxury and what the future of the industry looks like. Today's event is going to focus on living small, and it's going to look at how interior designers can help clients make the most out of small spaces and create something truly show-stopping, regardless of the square footage. We have with us today Nam Dang Mitchell from Calgary, Richard Willette and Maxime Vandal of Les Ensembliers from Montreal, and Montana Labelle from Toronto. All have earned international acclaim for their multiple amazing commercial and residential projects. Welcome to you all. Thanks, Each of our designers <laughs> is going to showcase a small space project that they've worked on. They're going to walk us through them through case studies. And they're gonna show us how they envisioned a knockout design even within a limited space. They're gonna bring us through some of the strategies that they employed to get the most out of the square footage. Then we're gonna talk about compact kitchens. Finally, we're gonna leave some room at the end of our conversation for audience questions. So please feel free to use the chat function to um, submit any queries that you have as they come to mind during our conversation. So we're going to start with uh, the first case study, which is going to be um, Nam, and she's showing us a 600 square foot apartment in Calgary. So go ahead, Nam. Hi, everyone. It's so nice to be here uh, with you all. Um, this is a little project. Uh, it's 600 square feet. It's a rental apartment that we did in one of our buildings in Calgary. Uh, this is the layout here. It's a little bit squished, but um, it's just a, a very small one bedroom apartment. Um, this We had a modest budget on this uh, project. So um, if we go to the next image here, uh, I found this lot of uh, silver limestone, which is uh, was quite a good deal. So the whole apartment became about the silver limestone. Uh, this kitchen faces the living area as most do in a small space. And what was key to this design was, um, as you can see on the right hand side, there's a hallway that leads down to the bedroom. Um, what I did was I used a built in panel ready fridge from Gen Air on the other side to balance uh, the whole room out, which allows us to focus sort of on the center um, of, of the kitchen where we sort of platted everything, the island, the hood fan, the backsplash in the silver limestone. Um, and that way you get away from the sort of squish to one side um, layouts that you normally see in small apartments. And this gave us a real nice focal point for the whole main living space. Um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can see it in detail, but I've added the same little cabinet that is above the fridge onto the other side over the doorway. Again, just to balance uh, those two areas out. Right. Uh, on the, yeah, we could go to the next slide. Oh, actually, it's supposed to be the island, but that's okay. This is the living room and it faces the kitchen. Um, and as you can see, I've kept the palette very much um, to the same palette as the kitchen. I find that in a small space, it's uh, very easy for it to look chaotic. So I like to use a limited palette. Um, 
in the corner, there's this big pillar that was structural that we could not get rid of at all. So what I did was had my um, carpenter build these uh, platform banquettes on either side. And that way you use up every square inch of uh, space that you have. Um, and there's a ledge for books on the back, um, just really trying to maximize the space. Uh, and where the painting is, is actually uh, a television. Uh, there's cable there for television um, oh, wow. as well. And we kept the old brick on the back. Uh, we can go to the next image. Okay, so this is the back of the island and we were able to squeeze in um, a 24 inch drawer microwave as well as a panel dishwasher uh, on this very little island. So it's nice and functional and I love the panel ready um, appliances. They're, they're great for a small space. Uh, we can go to the next image. So this is the bathroom and um, again, we use the silver limestone everywhere. Uh, we found the matching uh, 12 by 24 tiles and so slathered that on the shower walls and on the floors and um, just kept it really minimal and simple in the bathroom. And I think that's just the final image of the kitchen again. Uh, the chevron pattern floors were a real splurge but we had extra from uh, a larger job so that was a nice uh, nice little kick for this this uh, project as well wonderful so and you've managed yeah. to work in yeah you've managed to um, design in a very compact space a lot of functionality and also you're bringing in materials that um, are, are just readily available to you and making the most out of them. So that's really interesting strategy as well. Mm -hmm. I think um, if you have one strong idea that you can carry throughout the whole apartment, it just helps it be more cohesive and consistent and um, just a stronger point of view, I think. Whether the place is big or small, I think that's important. Right. And in terms of the built-in furniture, um, was mm -hmm. there, what were the major challenges there? Um, again, because it's, it's such a small space, I really wanted to use every inch of it. Um, you know, you can lift it and there's storage underneath, um, right. which is very critical in a small space. Um, and also they're, they were deep enough that if you had guests, you can just take off the back pillows and use it as uh, kind of a twin bed. So, wow. you know, multifunctional is very important in any kind of small mm -hmm. space design. Wonderful. Okay, thank you, Nam. Um, so next up, uh, we're gonna um, be led through the Paris Project in Toronto by Montana. Hi guys, how are you? I'm so happy to be here. Um, Ning, that project was amazing. Love seeing it. Um, so I'm going to take you through a project that we recently completed here in Toronto. And this was a small kitchen we did. Um, it was a renovation for a client. And when we got uh, the project, the existing kitchen was really, really awful. It um, actually had this weird jutting out island sort of at the end where you see the counter finishing. And the floor was tile, and there was actually a window where that large painting is in there. So we kind of broke the rules with small spaces on this one. We actually covered up the window um, just to make the floating shelf there sort of the focal point of the kitchen as opposed to a window. So, yeah, we really broke the rules with this one because you're never really supposed to cover up natural light, which we did. Um, and with this guy, we wanted to keep it all really tonal. Um, very clean and um, just maximize, you know, what we had with the space. We went with all panel ready appliances. And one of the things we love so much about Gen Air is that their panel ready appliances, there's just so many options to choose from for different kitchens. Um, so we went with a panel ready fridge and freezer and a very small oven. And this floating shelf was really um, it was difficult to convince the client because typically clients want as much storage as possible. So it was a bit of a challenge, but I'm really, really glad they did it. 
Um, in this photo here, we have like this beautiful display of vases that typically the client will have like their wine glasses and their everyday dishes. And it's sort of a way to pare down um, what you kind of always have shoved away in cupboards. So that's the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And what kind of material again were you using here? So with this kitchen, actually with this entire project, which you'll see as we go through it, we did Venetian plaster. So the whole house wow. is Venetian plastered and Venetian. we actually did the same finish on the cabinets. It's beautiful. Thank you. So if we could go, yeah. Okay, so there you can see a better image of the kitchen and you can see it's like this long galley kitchen. So one full side of it is panel ready appliances and the other side we used for the cooktop and the beautiful marble shelf you see. And we really wanted to keep just as much of a consistent palette as possible throughout the house. So we ended up going with this beautiful ocean blue travertine, which is the countertop uh, backsplash and shelf. Then we could go to the bathroom. This is one of my favorite bathrooms ever. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so when we also came to this bathroom, it was a total disaster, very, very choppy, had this horrible short ceiling shower and um, just this awful vanity. There was glass shelves in the window. So we ripped everything out and we decided to go again with the same palette that we used for the downstairs space. So the whole bathroom is actually micro cement. Um, mm. We wanted to keep it very clean and spa-like. And one of the best things about this bathroom was when we opened it up, there was actually um, a heating duct running through the ceiling, which is why it was so low when we got it. So it was sort of one of those happy mistakes. Um, we were never envisioning this art shower, but because we had a heating duct and we wanted to keep the ceilings really tall, like as high as we could go in there, we actually did this arch and it turned out to just be so beautiful. So. A lot of the times these happy mistakes are just just incredible and they you know make the bathroom so much more special so if we go to the next slide so this vanity okay so we went with all wall mounted plumbing um, in the bathroom which we think is a great idea when you're working with a smaller bathroom it just sort of um, takes your eye up and doesn't really take up counter space or you don't have, you know, a squat toilet sitting on the floor. So all the wall-mounted plumbing was a great way to make the most of the space. And another great thing about this is the marble vanity. So we've been wanting to do a marble vanity with storage in it for some time. And with a lot of the larger spaces that we work on, it was just out of the budget because, you know, we needed so many drawers and so much slab. And with this bathroom, the client was able to sort of do our dream vanity with the integrated marble drawer storage. So, yeah, it was great. If we go on so there's the an actual space. drawer. There's a drawer integrated into that. Yes. Wow. So typically we don't actually... Um, do drawers in marble vanities because yeah. it's very difficult and expensive. But um, with this, because we were working with just such a small vanity and the client, of course, needed storage in there. So we were able to have two drawers that pull out just below the sink and they can stash away all their things. Wonderful. Okay, and then the living space. So I think... Um, one of my favorite things with this space, this house was like full of hidden surprises. So we actually opened up the wall and we found this old fireplace, which again, happy mistake. And that became really the focal point for the whole main floor. So as you can see, we did this very interesting curved design um, and we plastered it. And um, in terms of the furniture in here, because it's a small space and the cli uh, client entertains quite a bit, we wanted all of the pieces to be really functional for their lifestyle. So we opted to go with things that are sort of movable if they're having a party. Um, for example, their coffee table is actually just two nesting tables. 
And they often, you know, will like shove those over to the side or maybe just have one. So when they're having people over, it's much more functional for their lifestyle. So I think with the smaller spaces, it's always important, number one, to invest in, you know, furniture you love because you don't have that much room to just clutter it up with all sorts of things. And number two, to Nam's point earlier, um, every piece should sort of be multifunctional. Great. And there's just another image, a different angle. So you can see those two nesting tables. And, you know, we just wanted to incorporate really neutral tones and keep it all really clean and simple. So um, how, how large is the space altogether? Um, so it's actually divided over four floors. So there's a lot of stairs in the house, but each floor is around 600 square feet. Okay. So in each floor, you're working with a very tiny footprint. Yeah, it was a very small footprint for each floor, but I mean, the house is sort of like this jumbo stretched yeah. out thing, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but very long and skinny. So we were trying to, you know, get, get us away from walking into like this long corridor and just having it feel, you know, more cohesive and more expansive. I love that every, um, it's kind of like you really roll with the punches, every kind of um, problem became an opportunity. It seemed as if you know, all of the, the weird kind of idiosyncrasies of the house you, you made. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We love when there's sort of like a construction problem because it's just like our way of trying to be creative and come up with a new solution. And honestly, like I would say 90% of the time, these problems always turn into like design gold. Yeah. And I imagine with clients, you know, it's, um, it's a good opportunity to present something that might be a little different or a little unique or out of their comfort zone is, you know, by, you know, showing that it can, it can solve the problem and make the space more functional at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. We always say like, we love doing renos over new builds because we just love, you know, having these like issues that come up and seeing what we can do to create something incredible and take sort of the problem to something incredible and special. Yeah, and I love your use of um, materials. Um, the um, wonderful thing about um, NAMS project is that it really maximizes one uh, finish and um, creates a cohesive space in that way. You're, you're taking a different tack and using um, different kinds of materials that are very complementary and um, Kind of unexpected to the Venetian plaster and and uh, the green marble, you know, which is a tone that not too many people go for. So yeah, always, it was a I hard sell. Can, <laughs> was it? I was going to ask: Is it a hard uh, sell for the client to? to yeah, not go for the Carrara? client. <laughs> <laughs> the client was like, "Green marble? Are you sure?" And I'm like, "Trust me, it's going to be cool. It's going to make a statement." So yeah, one of the other things that I really did want to touch on was that um, with the smaller spaces, it's definitely an opportunity to do, you know, sort of more wow moments and do something a little bit crazier. Um, because it is a small space, you don't want someone walking into a bathroom and just thinking, oh, this is just, you know, a tiny bathroom and there's really nothing special going on in here. So with that bathroom specifically, people walk in and they're like, oh my God, you have a green marble vanity. <laughs> like, this is so cool. So it's just, you know, it creates those like fun wow moments. So I think that's really important when you're working with a small space to just have fun with it and, you know, take some risks. Great. And on that note, uh, we're going to move on to uh, Les Ensembliers. Uh, Richard and Maxime, they're actually going to walk us through two projects, um, a mm -hmm. Chelsea apartment in New York, and then, is that the first one, and then the Toronto apartment? Yes, yes. absolutely. Okay, I, I, great. By the way, uh, Montana and Nam, um, fantastic uh, yeah. projects, and so well uh, integrated and, and fantastically designed. I actually, what I think are go we're, we're going completely the, the other way, way which, is, which is a very different We feel bad about approach. it. I, I, you know, I, I love your styles, both of you, and I love everything that you guys do. And this is a very different approach to the to the space. This was our apartment in New York. And when we found the place, um, 
it, it, the idea for us was to create something that is such a small living one room space. Yeah. We needed to make sure that we had all the functions that we wanted to have. So it's, it's making sure that you have zoning and well proportioned plan uh, to make sure that you are going to have a, a well lay- layout plan. So that was the idea. Um, <laughs> I actually filled a truck with only things that I love. Richard was very anxious about moving to New York. So, you know, to, to kind of paddle all his, all his insecurities, he, he just took everything he liked and he put it in the truck. And we're like, we're going to fit this thing. It's like That's this right. big armor. Where is this going to go? But to and, my defense, I, I, I did have a plan in my head, yeah. but, but I didn't really <laughs> want to uh, uh, narrow it down to a specific. But I, we did a layout. And having the living room, uh, the sofa right in the center, surrounding all the elements all around, you'll see in the second picture. But the idea behind this photo here is what you're seeing is that the armoire on the side, on the right side, is actually where the TV, the the, the laundry, the, the linens, yeah. even some dishes, the left side is actually for entertainment. That console is used for server. So I, and it's layered compared to all of what we just saw before. The idea is that I wanted it to feel like an atelier and I wanted to be surrounded by things that make sense to me when I'm away from, from our home. And this was our away home away. The yeah. idea behind this is that I want to be able to uh, be in those spaces and make sure that um, I will have different experiences all throughout the day within a small square. Yeah. So the next photo shows you the same apartment and it gives you an idea of this is our office desk and dining room table at the same time. I didn't want to compromise for me, depending on clients, it's gonna be different. But for me, I wanted to make sure that when I sat at this desk during the day, that I would be able to work at at the desk, but nighttime, if we're gonna entertain or if we're gonna have dinner, I wanna transform it. I'd rather take the time to transform it into the dining room than to use my space, which was limited, to create another desk area in the room. So multifunction, very simple. It's just, it's not rocket science, but it is the use of right space to make sure that it's a livable uh, home. And it doesn't, for me, I don't want to have an office right in that smack center space. And as Richard says, you know, I think everything needs to have uh, multiple purposes and multiple usage because you really need to maximize the experience uh, by trying to make every element uh, being able to have more, more use than one. Yeah, and it is it is such a, a an architecturally strong space. Yes, it that does. it was all about the architecture and the elements, letting sing those pieces, and just having the meaningful elements around it. I feel that in a in a small space, if you're going to live uh, minimally, it's fantastic. If you're going to live live layered, it's also fantastic. It's really finding what is meaningful to you and how mm-hmm. to make those elements yeah. work together. Mm-hmm. So next space is our um, old apartment in New York. Um, oh, this one is Toronto. Uh, Toronto, sorry. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the, um, the, the idea of what you're seeing here is that um, kitchen integrated, we wanted it to feel it's such, again, a small space connected to the living space. We wanted to make sure that the layout um, or hidden uh, all of the um, appliances were yes. hidden. Um, all of the elements were 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 minimal in the space of the kitchen, so that it did speak to the rest of the space uh, as a living space. We this was a builder block uh, approach, so we layered the elements together, finished some panels on the uh, on the upper cabinets, so that it felt custom and finished. And the idea behind also the island was I didn't want to use seats on an island. I wanted it to feel more like a continuous conversation to the space. So we used it as a bookcase and elements. And, and, I, and actually the, the picture there that you see is taken from the, the bed. You know, the, the, it's a very small space. So we didn't want to be in the bedroom looking at an island, looking at a kitchen. So the island became kind of a multi-purpose piece of furniture where you have the library bookcase and by extending it with this uh, white oak uh, U-shaped furniture, it elongated the shape and was able to allow us to put like a very sculptural light fixture on top of it. So it became like a more cohesive space than having a kitchen, uh, you no know, little living room and little bedroom by trying to create the si- repurpose the silent differently. Because having the extension of the wood was creating some warmth in there. And to Max's point, having the light fixture, you want an impactful element of art. If it's going to be a kitchen, 
part of your main space, when we're coming into the apartment, the first thing we see is that island and we're seeing that light fixture. I wanted something that felt special and important and impactful. Um, and again, scale elements, when we're seeing, we're seeing the art on the right there over the sofa, um, every element that was in that space was quite bold and strong. I'd rather have bigger than, and less than having something that has more impact to the space. So that was wow. the Toronto apartment in the uh, kitchen. Is, yeah, and I, I think there's, there's another photo yes, of the apartment so. also. Yeah. So I think living small for for us is the idea of also uh, making those choices. If you're you're going to have to narrow down some elements, you're going to have to make some sacrifices. And within this space, I would much rather see uh, an edited version of way, way to live in, in our our closet. Have a sense of a walk-in closet. If I take out the builder locked doors. And I don't have a sliding ordinary door. So I'm, I want to create that element of custom. So creating that piece in there and editing all the elements of how you live. I'm a pretty neat person. Max doesn't have a life in, no. in our house. Poor guy. He just, he just has to live with <laughs> what he's told to do. Poor guy. Yes, where we live in a magazine. That's what I'm <laughs> telling myself every day. But it is, it is also living somewhat... Um, intentionally and i like that approach to things and and that closet because you know you imagine that you're in the bed and you're just uh, two feet away from the mattress there's those big white sliding doors and that concept could apply also to a kitchen that open shelving really creates some depth creates some movement in a space and when you're into limited uh you know obviously limited space it can be a good trick in order to uh, to really you know layer this, your space and 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 push the boundaries. This was a tiny tiny. Oh yes, place. it was we, like a, we decided to paint the walls in black because we might as well embrace the fact that it was small. And you're actually not seeing the walls that much. You're actually pushing them yeah. further out, as Max says. So it feels a, a sensation of infinity. It is an it is an effect. There were some beautiful big large windows facing Yorkville in that space. So. We were lucky enough to have huge windows in all of the apartment, but the spaces were really small. And and that to, to conclude the the closet unit that we designed there, you can see it's it's very luxurious because we thought mm -hmm. if we're to be in a very small space, we really have to enhance the the finishes in order to really create something that is appealing to us. And uh, it was very simple to achieve, but by doing just those uh, brass uh, junction with the black rods. It just created a very lux luxury, luxurious feeling there. And I did have other hidden nooks and crannies and closets in the apartment, <laughs> so I could hide them. Not so perfect stuff. So that's that's how we lived in that space. Yes. Beautiful. I love the idea that you bring um, up about sight lines from different spaces. Um, you're not just trying to make a small space as functional as possible, but you want to please the eye, you also want it to feel cohesive and aesthetically beautiful too. I think it's so important yes. because or else you're going to you're going to feel like you, to Montana's point, you're gonna walk into a bathroom that feels super ordinary instead of a moment in a showpiece of a of a vanity. The same way as you're gonna come into the small apartment, you're gonna see that sideline of a Gabriel Scott. It's a piece of art. You want to have something that feels yeah. special. So sight lines is really important in all elements of a small space, for sure. Mm -hmm. And the idea that, you know, you don't have to be um, hemmed in by some of this um, accepted wisdom about small spaces, that you need small pieces of furniture and you need to like, you know, multiple different zones. You can have a beautiful piece that you'll want to work at, eat at, entertain at, and you Absolutely. also can layer uh, textures and, and books and you know all these things that we're yeah. told, you know, get away, <laughs> <I> think, <laughs> like get rid I, of it. <laughs> I think living, I think living sparsely and, and very minimal is fantastic. I love it. It's it's very different. It can be in a big space as much as it can be in a small space. In a small space, you can do the same thing. You can mm -hmm. live with multiples and really layer as much as you can live as as sparsely as possible. But I do feel that in a smaller space, sometimes you have to really pick your battles of impact. So whether it's the big art, the big sofa and smaller tables or elements, you don't have to be, there is no rules. It's just finding mm -hmm. that, striking that balance. And, and I think it's an opportunity. We're talking about this before that 
when you have a small space and you want to create this maximalism look or you know the layered look it's so much more easier to achieve because obviously you have less surface to cover and when when we look at how we can play with those with those projects you know it's it's very playful to you, you to, have you have you have less means to create something with less elements but you're still going to create that look if you have a 8,000 square feet of, of layered and well-traveled and so on, you're going to have to have a couple of trucks there to, to fill it up. Um, but it is, those are, those are yeah. interesting elements. Too. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, so we've, had, we've seen three amazing takes on small space. Um, we're going to um, take a small break, um, and then we're going to dive into how to create dream compact kitchens with clever interior design strategies. So we'll see you in uh, just a few moments. And we're back. Okay, so let's talk compact kitchens. Whether you rent or own a house, everybody wants to make the most out of their kitchen space. So even if you're working with a tight footprint, um, clever interior design strategies and small space solutions can go a long way to making the kitchen the star of your home. But what are those design strategies to make a dream kitchen in even a limited space? Um, so my first question is going to be um, for Montana, and then uh, everybody will get a chance to um, also answer. So um, what are the top sacrifices that homeowners are not willing to make when they're renovating a small kitchen? And how do you work around them? Great question. So I think um, the top sacrifice is storage. I think people are very, very specific about how much storage they need. Um, and, you know, people just have, generally speaking, a lot of things. So for us, when we sort of start off working with a client who does have a small kitchen, um, we always start by saying, how do you live? How do you use your space? And that sort of determines, first and foremost, what appliances we're doing. So, you know, some people take out a lot and just need the space more for entertaining. Some people freeze, you know, all their food and need a huge freezer and, you know, don't have a lot of fresh food. So it's just very specific to how the client uh, lives their lifestyle. And we sort of go from there and figure it out with them. Great. Okay, uh, Richard and Maxine, same question for you. Well, I think Montana hit it on the nail for sure is that <laughs> our clients are all the same. Yeah. They, they want the storage. They want to have uh, as much good storage space as possible. But I also think that in the idea of what you was mentioning, uh, Montana, is that I think it's the, the experience the, of yeah, the, the, the size of the appliances is always a barrier. You know, we do a lot of downsizers and, and you know, the, 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 the big appliances that people are used to have. Um, they're really reluctant to consider going to smaller appliances. And, um, you know, the first question that we try to bring to their mind is, you know, when are you going to cook a turkey in this apartment? And, and, and at the end of the day, they just realize that they just don't need that huge oven. And, and from there, you, you realize that, you know, the, the, the new technology, the new appliances, especially with Janair, uh, the compact appliances are not are you know, of a less quality. They have all the same features as the, the, the larger ones. The urban living collection is that you're never going to feel like you're actually uh, making a sacrifice per se. You are making a sacrifices for width and size, size and so on. You'll have to make choices, but you are not going to sacrifice on um, the experience and the quality and the luxury of the element. So this is the conversation that's easier for us to bring back to the table definitely. when that sacrifice needs to be done. Um, and, and if you're going to make those choices, you can still have all the columns, all the, the, the covered uh, panels, element, all the elements of a great kitchen, just in a small scale. So those sacrifices, I feel, are lesser in women. Definitely, yeah. Okay, wonderful. And Nam, same question for you. 
Um, I completely agree with uh, everything that's been said. Uh, definitely when you're downsizing to a smaller apartment or condo, uh, my clients don't want to sacrifice style or luxury. And I think, um, you know, it's better to, to have a, a smaller home that is well appointed than a huge house that um, isn't completely well thought out. Uh, so I would say in a small kitchen, splurge on the uh, panel ready built in appliances, splurge on the beautiful stone uh, and splurge on that gorgeous tap, that your dream tap for your kitchen. Um, it can be spectacular. Great. Um, so the next question is, um, what do you look for specifically when it comes to adding major appliances to small spaces? And what do you find most challenging about this part of the process? And we'll start with Richard and Maxim. I think, I think I'll start with an example to answer that question. I think it's the, the we're, we're actually creating a space for clients right now, uh, designing for them at Abita 67. Um, and we only two cubes, so it's a small space. And the first thing we see when we come in is right smack yes. center of the kitchen. And um, in, in most of the small spaces, it's going to be that case. The conversation we're having with the client is that, do you want to see something of a range that's part of the conversation that's important to the conversation? Or would you prefer not coming into a kitchen where you're going to see the kitchen? So uh, try to work with more of a, um, uh, an induction cooktop and having the, the, the uh, I only have the down uh, the downdraft approach, so yeah. that we don't see a hood, we don't see a cooktop, we don't see all of these elements coming into that space. So I think this is what we're looking for in the first beginnings of a of a of a of a layout for a project. In, in that ex example, yeah, example. but I'm I'm super more practical than you on those things, and I would say that for me. The silent appliances is a big <laughs> must. You know, we, 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 we have a space right now where we live and, and the dishwasher, I, I call him my roommate because he makes so much noise at night. You can ask him. He's the nice one, but I'm not the nice one. If we get the, the old dishwasher that we're going to change. Yeah, we're going to change it. But, you know, and, and it, until you experience it, you don't realize that in a small space, all those motors, uh, they just occupied a space in your head. And it's quite important to, Look for the that. silent, the quality, the other. Exactly. Yeah. Sure, you're right. That's a very good point. Um, quiet dishwashers. And I know that uh, Gen Air makes super quiet dishwashers. So um, the next question, uh, the same question actually goes to Nam. So, what do you uh, look for specifically when it comes to adding major appliances? And uh, what's the most challenging part of that process? Um, for me, by far, the refrigeration is the most challenging because they're, you know, your standard fridge always sticks up past your cabinetry and they're always an awkward height. Um, so I always try and talk my clients into a built in panel ready fridge like the one I have behind me because it's just creates a much more streamlined, uncluttered um, uh, kitchen. And then you can put the emphasis on what you want the eye to go to instead of uh, just the big fridge in the room. Um, and I love the 24-inch uh, the one that Janair makes. It's perfect for a small apartment. Okay. Montana, same question for you. Yeah, you guys have answered it so well. Um, <laughs> I think for me, um, one of the biggest challenges would be that a lot of the times clients will come and they'll be like, you know what, I like I'm looking for a double oven. And then I kind of sit down with them and I'm like, okay, so like I, I take it you're a huge cook and you know, you have a lot of people over and they're like, oh no, like I cook, you know, maybe once or twice a week. And I'm like, okay, so why do you need a double oven? So I think a lot of the time people just, you know, sometimes see things on Pinterest or Instagram in a kitchen and they don't necessarily understand, you know, how they're going to take it back and use it for themselves. So I think making clients understand, you know, a bit more about their lifestyle and how they use things is really important as a starting point for your kitchen. And, you know, Gen Air just has such a wonderful range of different sizes that it honestly makes our job a lot easier. Right. That's, that's a really good point. I think we all dream of, of that kind of uh, professional kitchen with all of the gizmos. Um, but when you have a small space, you have to be... Um, a lot more discerning and think about your actual habits 
discipline your lifestyle and um, and make those uh, smarter decisions about what kinds of wonderful appliances you should get. Um, my last question before we uh, go into the Q, uh, the audience Q and A phase, is um, more of an overall question. So, what are the three things to keep top of mind from a design perspective when working with a small space? So, I guess three of your top tips, and we'll start with Nam. Um, well, definitely one is. Um, ruthless editing in a small space you really need to <laughs> to pare it down to i would say just the things you love um, and you know make sure that palette is in check because it can turn into uh, a bit of a dog's breakfast if you have everything out so edit 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 um, the second thing is be mindful of the scale of furnishings in your space. And I, by that, I definitely do not mean make everything little, tiny, minuscule dollhouse furniture type. Um, but we've all seen those, uh, you know, small living rooms with the overstuffed sofa set. You need to use a floor plan and plan it out so that it, you make sure that everything fits. And then the last one is, um, you know, I really, really love uh, large scale artwork in a small space. It adds such, uh, su such a grandeur to the space and it can actually make it look so much bigger. So those are my top three, I would say. Right. Um, actually, um, can you tell us, Nam, what appliances you have in your space? We haven't addressed the amazing kitchen behind you yet. So let us, uh, <laughs> let us in on what you've got going on there. So th these, um, I'm in my office kitchen. And we've got wow. a uh, Gen Air uh, <laughs> panel fridge there with the freezer, bottom freezer. Uh, right here, we have the Gen Air uh, cooktop and the, um, the hot pan. And we have an oven on the other side of the island. And then we have the very quiet uh, panel ready dishwasher over there as well. So yeah, we've mm -hmm. been very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, um, so same question to um, Montana. So what are the three things that you keep top of mind? Um, so yeah, speaking more to what Nam said, less is definitely more. Um, always better to have sort of too little than too much. Um, I think for me, going more tonal is always more pleasing to the eye. Um, if you can keep within sort of like a consistent, similar color palette. I think that's really important when tying together a small space. And my last thought would be invest in it. So I think when you're working with a huge space that, you know, a lot of the times you need so much material or so much millwork or so much hardwood. And I think when you are working in a smaller space, you can really invest in high quality um, furniture, millwork, appliances, all of that that you know, really make the space special to you and last forever. Thank you. And um, Richard and Maxine, same question. But first, uh, tell us also what, what kinds of appliances you have going on behind you, Jenner. Well, we have quite a few in here. So the, yes. the, full, <laughs> the full series of the urban living ones are here, the, the uh, coffee machine and the microwave uh, drawer. Um, really can't wait to get that into my own kitchen. I've exactly. used it a couple of times for clients, but I want it in my kitchen. And we have the uh, the steam oven on this side. Oh, nice. Steam oven, yet another great one. Yes. I think I think one of the key elements to uh, everything that Nam and Montana said is that it's sort of like a wrap up of, of, of the same conversation. I think it's important that um, scale. Uh, proportions, uh, layout, the best layout possible. If you're going to be in an open space, you want to make sure that your layout is going to make sense so that you feel that there is a cohesive element to your mm -hmm. living space within your kitchen space so that it doesn't feel that you're only in the kitchen. Uh, I think that's very, very important that it feels like um, the panel ready elements and the proportions for the height and, and, and scale to the space. And, and I think, you know, as an architect, in my mind, you know, the, the, the planning and, this, and the, the size and the dimensions of things are so important in a small space that it's, it's a real challenge to really try to, to find the right balance between beauty, efficiency, uh, 
practice and space use in order to maximize the experience that you're doing. So and to create that impactful element is that I'm going to want to use those fantastic knobs and the neural details from everything that's in general. If you're going to make some impact and choices, then I want to have those elements that will uh, be part of the mm -hmm. conversation. So to, to, uh, to Montana, and again, to what Nam was saying is that go to town with, with spending the right yes. pieces in there. So have they, have, they have an impact in there. Yeah. Um, I think those, so. yeah, that's pretty much that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, um, yes, I, I agree. I think, you know, making that investment um, from the start is really um, creating a space with purpose and, and something that, you know, you're going to love and, and that will last. And, you know, that's an important um, aspect of design, too, is you're going to create a, a something that is a showstopper that um, will stand the test of time. So um, thank you all for your, uh, the wonderful conversation. We have 10 minutes for questions from our audience. Um, so if you haven't submitted one, uh, please, do, uh, please do so now. We'll try and get to them all. Um, so we do have one. Uh, we have a question coming in from Laura right now. She says, um, this is, I believe, from Montana. I love the yeah. silver limestone. However, most lab places do not recommend limestone in a kitchen. How did you get around this? So we actually have travertine in that kitchen. Um, we've actually been doing travertine quite a bit in several kitchens lately. And um, we haven't had any issues with it whatsoever. We make sure that our fabricator um, seals both sides of it and fills in any of the imperfections on both the front and the back. Um, but you just have to be mindful and, you know, with any natural stone, um, wipe if you spill anything, avoid, you know, harsh lemon juice and tomato and wine. And honestly, with the marbles that we use, we always tell people that, you know, we, we love when it shows that it's been used. So enjoy it. It's not precious and you know the wear and tear that you get on it just tells a story that's beautiful i i i Thanks. i love that <laughs> and uh <laughs> that's something you know becomes yours when it develops that pet pina especially if it's natural honest material and um and also it's a relationship you you take care of it in a in a specific mm -hmm. way and it will reward exactly. you um, the next question also, I think for Montana is from Erica, <laughs> she says, <laughs> we, we're loving the materials, uh, Montana. So, uh, is the Venetian plaster hand painted? What company did you use? Not sure if you're willing to give up that information. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Venetian plaster is actually traveled on, um, anyone can do it. I actually, during COVID, um, ordered some Venetian plaster from this company in California. And I actually did my guest bedroom myself. It took me like four weeks, um, but it was really fun to do. So anyone can do it as long as you have lots of time. Um, in that particular case study that we looked at, um, my contractor Goslin Group was the one who did it. Okay, great. Just seeing if there are any more questions uh, from our audience. Um, that's um, you know, interesting that you spent that much time for yeah. weeks, like well, hand trampling. <laughs> <laughs> so there wasn't much to do. I just you know enjoyed my time plastering, and it's actually like mm -hmm. really fun and very easy to do. I'm sure it also makes you feel like I you know very satisfied at the end. Oh, oh my god, such a sense of accomplishment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question is from Jennifer. She's asking, what are your recommendations for lighting in small spaces? That's a very good question. Uh, can you go large in scale, similar to art, to make a statement, or should it be more subtle? Go big or go um, home. I guess go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, really, it's really a choice. It depends on the, the situation. It depends on the 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 room that you're working with. But I do feel that art, to, to Nam's point, is really impactful when it's big, the same way as lighting. 
is is so special when it is it feels like an art piece and it has more yeah. impact when it's bigger but i would say that go with multiple type of source in order to create different ambience because you, you're you'll be uh, you know often in that space so dimmable obviously dimmable uh, light fixtures and 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 different type of you know down light up light you know yeah. moves so you can you can just change it yeah. Nam, do you have any um, advice? I, I completely agree. Put everything on dimmers. Uh, you want to create that ambience at night, especially. And if, you're, um, if you have sort of one statement light fixture, that, that can create a whole room. So, uh, you know, again, it's about editing and uh, picking what your wow moments are and then making everything else sort of uh, enhancing that particular piece. And Montana, do you have any, um, you, you blocked out a window. So how did you, um, <laughs> create, <laughs> how did you bring in light? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I think, unfortunately, I wish I had an image, but in the same project that we've been talking about, um, the dining table is honestly inches away from the kitchen, from the edge of that counter. And we actually had a custom light made by an artist, um, just outside of Toronto. And it's honestly, it took, I think, 10 guys to put it up. It is so massive. And it has uh, four or five bulbs in it that are like the brightest big bulbs. And it's this huge plaster piece. And it's the only actually light fixture in the house. But we were just like, you know what? We have the small space. We want to do something amazing and just have people's eyes going from one place to the next and saying, wow, this is just so incredible in here. So yeah, I would just go big with your light fixtures, have fun and do something outside of the box. Great. So really, um, I guess the idea is just don't be constrained by the size of the space. Do, do the thing that you know makes you happy and makes the space really sing. Um, those are all great um, endorsements for going big or go home. Um, <laughs> And the next question we have is from Sue. Um, this is another one that for everyone. Which materials last forever and stand the test of time if you had to pick one? Maybe we'll start with Nam on this one. Um, I love real natural stone. I have it all over my house and I'm in a really old house. We've been there a long time and our, our stone floors are cracked. Even some parts of our countertops are cracked. And the funny thing is, because it's a natural stone, it kind of just looks charming when it's old and cracked. But if it was um, something man-made, then it just looks broken. So I would definitely say uh, natural stone, but you really have to embrace um, all the patina that comes with it. Yeah. And I'm now just um, kicking myself because I know it, it was you who used the silver and I think I, I um, asked Montana to field that question, but feel free to, to speak to that as well. Like, um, were there any challenges to bringing that material into the kitchen? Well, um, it really depends if on your sort of level of um, perfection, I guess. Uh, yeah. I live with uh, limestone countertops at home and uh, you just use like an enhancer if you have, uh -huh. um, you put, lemon on it or something and it etches it quite badly then you just put this enhancer on it and over time it just sort of blends in back in so um it's not for people who you know freak out uh if there's a mark <laughs> on the countertop but <laughs> but it, it's very livable i've had it for over 16 years now and it's it's great great um richard um next theme um what kind of materials oh, I, do you I think yeah, I think anything that is natural again to Nam's point, and I don't want to repeat, but for us, it's it's the the word patina is part of our <laughs> daily words <Yes>. in, <laughs> in, in concepts and people and clients. Is that you want to have something that will have a life that will change over time. And, and we try to push the own finish in a stone when we whenever you use one because it you know the the, the polish is very shiny, looks very new, and it this is the one that really mark fast but if you go with the own it's already kind of like toned down but at and the same time just... i think it's all part of what light should be whether it's it's, it's high gloss not high gloss it, it's, yeah, it's but, but i don't know i'm, I'm the worst stressful for him when we're in the kitchen. i cannot like, cook i don't know um, but that being said 
<laughs> just because we're going to have to resell the house at one point. But one last thing is that we're we're actually demolishing our old house in the country, and we're going to use all the walls, all the old floors, yes. to re-put them in the new house. And I want to leave them as old as possible because that's what's yeah. going to be the most interesting part. So that, anything yes. that has character and soul. Exactly. The 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 the, the age of it. The trace of time just give you a story about, about about your object, and I think we should and we should embrace it instead of trying to to we hide it or to fix Europe it. We travel to Europe to go see old beautiful yes. things, and we just want perfect things here. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. But that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. true. Okay, and um, I think we have time for just uh, one or two more questions. This one is specifically for Mont Montana. It's from Anthony in Toronto. He says Montana love loves that bathroom. Can you tell me how much it costs to do a bathroom like that? <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. We love the bathroom too. Um, it's hard to say. Honestly, I try to stay away um, from pricing things as much as possible. Um, I will tell you that doing micro cement and marble is definitely not cheap. Um, we usually liken doing micro cement in a shower or bathroom to doing slab. So it's definitely on the higher end of a budget. Um, yeah, that's, that's the best I can tell you right now. <laughs> okay, appreciate it. You know, it's, it's, yeah, about choosing the right materials. You can have an incredible effect with micro cement, just as you, and it can look just as luxurious as, um, as other materials. Um, okay, one last question. Suzanne um, is asking, all three projects were beautiful. Would the designers share the, oh, she's also asking for budget ranges. <laughs> so I think a lot of people are curious about, you know, it's a small space, but you're making amazing things happen with them, within them. Um, I don't know if, um, if Nam, if you'd be comfortable talking about that. Uh, it's difficult uh, because we kind of did uh, three apartments on one level all at the same time. So they were all, the whole budget was intertwined. But um, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't, it, I, I had to watch what I was spending on. <laughs> it wasn't a big budget. <laughs> I'm Richard, and uh, nice I'm, I'm getting out of that conversation. I, I would say that you know, <laughs> it's, obviously a kitchen is more expensive in the project than the rest of the house because that's where you condense most of your of your your expenses. But I would say usually mm -hmm. to my clients that whenever we do a high end renovation, that we should we should target between two hundred and three hundred dollars a square foot for for an overall project. And obviously, you're going to spend more in the kitchen than than in the hallway. But that's kind of a good benchmark in today's world to see how much you should you should plan to spend for getting the the look and the quality materials. I love this part. That's great. That's a good point. Um, that is a great tip. And um, you know, it's the, it's the kitchen. You have to invest in it. Uh, think kitchen first, and um, and and create a great space around that. Um, we are. Out of time for questions, and I want to thank you so much. Um, all four of you have been wonderful. Your projects are beautiful, and it's been a pleasure to learn more about them. Um, so this is a wrap for the second installment of the Gen Air series. I want to thank also everyone, our audience, for tuning in. And um, I want to uh, remind everyone to keep an eye on your inbox. There's going to be a third installment of the Gen Air series um, in 2022. And we would love to see you all again for that. Thank you. And um, until next year, thank you, everyone. Bye.